Minister Bridget McKenzie, Deputy Leader of the Nationals, thanks for joining us on the Flow Network. Great to be with you. Now, you've got quite a long title there of all the ministries that you're holding. We'd love to talk to you about regionalisation, but could you just run through those portfolios that you're holding at present? Yeah, Ricky, uh, I have said to the Prime Minister you almost need a PhD to read my title, but um, it's a great honour to be back in Cabinet. But I'm the Minister for Regionalisation, uh, Regional Communications and Regional Education. I'm also the Minister responsible for Emergency Management uh, and national disaster recovery and resilience. So for those things, like I know um, during the Black Summer bushfires, a lot of South Australia experienced significant damage as a result of those bushfires. It's it's my agencies that are responsible for assisting those communities to rebuild and um, to plan for the future. And I'm also the emergency management side right now are very, very busy um, repatriating the 4,100 uh, people that we got out of Afghanistan and my regionalisation program I'm looking to not just decentralise government jobs out of capital cities into regional communities but to really work with uh, businesses across the country to see how we can make it easier for them to shift. And Minister for our audiences across SA, Victoria and New South Wales that regionalisation topic is a hot one in the sense that there's a big move on even the property data we saw yesterday property prices moving faster in regions than in the capital cities how do we make sure we capitalise on this sentiment where people are moving out to the regions? Yeah look you're dead right and I think what I want to be doing as Minister responsible for this area is really working with that organic shift that's occurring as a result of COVID-19, uh, where we are seeing record numbers of Australians deciding to do what we who all live out in the regions already know, that it is a great place um, to live, to work and to raise a family. Uh, and so that's about the, the data is showing up, as you said, in property figures, the population shifts are amazing. And I think it's as a result because now out in rural and regional Australia in so many areas, because of uh, our investment over time in things like connectivity and um, transport routes, etc., you can actually work from home. You can actually have a sustainable career. It's it's not just about heading out to the regions to work on a dairy farm or do fruit picking or work in a mine. Uh, There's a whole suite of options available to you to have a really sustainable career. So some of the things that we have to do is ensure that we have got a skilled workforce out in the regions. A lot of businesses, when I talk to them and say, well, look, we'd love to come out. It'd be a lot cheaper to operate. You've got an airport. You've got great uh, transport routes, great schools and hospitals. What are we... But I'm not confident that I'll have the right skill set in the workforce is to make sure we've got those training options available locally and also to make sure that when we do open up internationally, our population policy as a country uh, ensures that those people from around the globe that want to come to the safest country on earth uh, actually make their way out of the capital cities and are incentivised into the region. So they're the sorts of things that I'm talking with other ministers uh, to develop a whole of government response. Now, with your telecommunications hat on, um, is there a way in which you know good internet speeds and even mobile phone black spots is a part of a way of making sure people can participate remotely in their workplace if it's city-based? Yeah, I think you raise a crucial point. And I think when you look at um, our government's investments coming on 10 years, it's been incredibly significant. Before the Liberal and the National Party uh, came to power, there was no rural uh, black spot funding uh, and we didn't have the MBN being rolled out in the regions and we didn't have SkyMaster satellites in the sky. So there has been a significant shift. Uh, I just think about all the cutting out when I was driving to work that would occur in that hour uh, just doesn't exist at the moment. But there are still black spot issues, which is why we're continuing to invest. Uh, We've put $117 million on the table uh, for a regional connectivity program, recognising now that maybe big towers that are owned by one telco isn't actually uh, the best model in the 21st century. Uh, Maybe we need to be looking at uh, different tech options and more bespoke uh, solutions, particularly for those hard-to-reach areas. And, you know, even our investment in South Australia has seen 85 base stations, uh, 53 of which are, are complete everywhere from Loxton to Mount Gambier and in between. 
Um, and I think we're just going to continue to do that because that you're right, that is one of the critical questions that business and government uh, employees ask as they're heading out into the regions. But I, I do fundamentally believe that our COVID-19 recovery as a nation will be led by the regions. We're seeing um, production up in mining. We're seeing production up in agriculture. Uh, so where the great jobs are, where the global opportunities are, are out in rural and regional uh, Australia and we're planning as a government to ensure we capitalise on that. Well, Minister, thanks so much for your time and being on the Flow Network with us. Uh, we'll catch up with you again soon. Look forward to it.